Hello, my name is Manel Luján. I'm senior physician specialist in respiratory medicine and I work in the Hospital de Sabadell, Corporació Parc Taulí, uh, Spain. I'm going to speak about the use of minimal inspiratory time and maximal inspiratory time in pressure support ventilation. As you know, uh, the pressure support ventilation is one of the most frequently modes used in non-invasive ventilation. It's a pressure-limited and flow cycled mode in which after the sensitivity setting has been triggered, the pressure increases until a pressed value is reached. This uh, pressed value is maintained throughout the inspiratory cycle. The expiratory phase begins when the flow uh, reaches a determined value, usually a percentage of peak flow value. In some ventilators, like the Bibo 40, the clinician has the option to mod uh, modifying this value, changing the percentage of peak flow in which the ventilator cycles to expiration. For example, in patients with restrictive disorders like idiopathic kephoscoliosis, usually the uh, cycle of criterion is set at lower values of peak flow to avoid premature termination of breaths. Conversely, in obstructive disorders, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, this uh, cycle of criterion is set usually at higher values of peak flow, shortening inspiratory time and avoiding auto -peep and air trapping. Another important feature of the Vivo 40 ventilator is the possibility to set in the pressure support mode a preselected inspiratory minimal and maximal inspiratory time. When selecting a minimal inspiratory time, the algorithm of the ventilator operates as follows. If the inspiratory time of the patient's breath is longer than the minimum inspiratory time selected in the ventilator, breaths are flow cycled. Conversely, if the inspiratory time of the patient's breath is shorter than the selected in the ventilator, breaths are time cycled. The theoretical basis of selecting a minimal inspiratory time is to try to avoid the premature termination of breaths, mainly in restrictive patients. However, we must consider that if we have selected a long cycle of criterion, we are operating in the final portion of the flow time curve. In this situation, volume gain prolonging inspiratory time may be really low. To demonstrate this, we can simulate the situation with a patient with a restrictive disorder setting a compliance of 20 milliliters per centimeter of water in the electronic lung. The appropriate cycling of criterion for this patient will be at low values of peak flow, corresponding to levels 7 to 9 in the Vivo 40 ventilator. Let's we analyze what happens if we selected a minimal inspiratory time of 1.3 seconds. If you can see, the first breaths are flow cycled at 10% of peak flow. When we selected the minimal inspiratory time, the inspiratory time is clearly longer, but you may appreciate that the volume gain is really low. The conclusion is that we must ensure that setting a minimum inspiratory time, we achieve an increase in the deliberate tidal volume. Moreover, if we select a minimum inspiratory time longer than the neural inspiratory time, the patients may feel uncomfortable with the ventilator. On the other side, we have also the possibility of selecting a maximum inspiratory time. In this situation, the algorithm of the ventilator operates as follows. If the inspiratory time of the patient's breath is shorter than the selected in the ventilator, breaths are normally flow cycled. Conversely, if the inspiratory time of the patient's breath is longer than the maximum inspiratory time selected in the ventilator, breath is time cycled. One of the main advantages of selecting a maximum inspiratory time is to avoid the delayed cycling usually associated to the presence of unintentional leaks. Unintentional leaks 
cause delayed end of inspiratory phase because the cycling of criterion may be not achieved. Then the ventilator, after a security preset time, usually two to three seconds, cycles to expiration. When selecting a maximum inspiratory time, we can short this preset time, avoiding unnecessary prolonged inspiratory time in patients with large leaks. We can reproduce this situation also in the simulator by adding an inspiratory leak in the circuit with the help of a T-piece and the threshold valve with a resistance of 10 cm of water. When the valve is excluded, additional leak does not happen. When we open the valve, you can see in the record that the cycles show a delayed end and we can also observe some ineffective breaths between them. If we select a maximum inspiratory time close to patient's neural time, we can avoid the harmful effects of this delayed cycling. For example, in this record, you may appreciate that in the first half, the breathing pattern is regular. After the cycle indicated with an arrow, the breathing pattern becomes non-regular with ineffective breaths. The market cycle has a delayed end and a flatter slope in the flow time curve, suggesting the presence of leaks. In this case, we could avoid this delayed cycling by setting an appropriate maximum inspiratory time. In conclusion, the use of a maximum inspiratory time may be useful in clinical situations in which large leaks are associated with a delayed cycling to expiration. Thank you very much for your attention.